Hello guys, I'm wearing a jumper in June. I'm not happy with the weather. Glastonbury's next week and whilst you still can have fun at a wet festival, it just makes everything an absolute mission. Getting anywhere is tiring as fuck and takes twice as long. Yeah, oh god, it needs to be dry. So it needs to be dry. I'm not a religious man but I'll be praying. Yeah, uh, anyway. A few pickups to show, not a lot, just wanted to get this video out there before I go away. Um, it's some original Xbox stuff, imagine that. Uh, so yeah, I've been getting some games off CEX. Uh, they've got a good website, good prices usually, and uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I've been enjoying using that site, but it's a little bit of a lottery. You don't get to see the games before they get delivered, so whether they come complete or sans manual is a bit of a risk. And, uh, you know, they could come beat up with, you know, that kind of thing. But if they are, then I guess you can always take them back to your local store. So it's not a hell of a massive risk, but uh, that's what I've been doing. And I'll show you some of those in a bit. I've also been going through the original Xbox collection and trying to kind of slim it down a little bit. Because uh, whilst I've been, I've been pretty discerning with the collecting, uh, you know, there's a few that has crept in there that I wasn't sure about. So I'm just going through things to see if I actually like the games. And if not, they're going. That's obviously there's some games that are very collectible that I'll keep even if I don't particularly like them. But for the main, you know, I'm trying to separate the wheat from the chaff here. Uh, there's not a lot of chaff though because, like I said, I've been you know pretty much sticking to stuff that I'm quite sure I'll enjoy. But you know, it happens. Uh, duplicates as well, they happen. So yeah, there's got some stuff here that I'm going to. Uh, well, I'm probably going to take in for trade. I was going to offer them up to you guys for trade, but they're not in the greatest condition, so I don't know how cheeky that would be to try and palm off some of my rough-looking rejects. Um, I could try and put them in new boxes if anybody's interested, but I'll show them anyway and have a little chat. So, Outlaw Golf. Yeah, golf games, they just don't hold my interest. Uh, once upon a time, I used to enjoy them. I stuck this on for an hour or so and just didn't really get much out of it, so that's going. Again, yeah, not in the greatest condition. Like you can see, a bit of scruff on the box. It probably could be cleaned off fairly easily. Midnight Club 3, great game, but it's a duplicate. And I've got one that's complete now, that's Sans Manual. Uh, Burnout 3, again, this is a duplicate. Uh, but that's complete. Probably need a new box for that. It's got a bit of a massive hole in the plastic there. Time Split is 2, it's a duplicate. I do believe that's quite heavily scratched. I'll have to check that. Spartan Total Warrior uh, is, you know, your, your, hack, your massive hack and slash games, what do they call those type of games? Um, yeah, it's just not my type of thing. No, nope, don't like it. And this one was a bit of a disappointment, actually. Uh, I like the look of it from pictures that I saw, but I hadn't done too much research on it. Uh, and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It's Loons. The fight for fame. And I thought this was going to be like an action platformer. Turns out it's more kind of like Power Stone, sort of like a multiplayer, um, you know, uh, melee combat game. So yeah, like Power Stone sort of thing. Uh, so that's going. Uh, but if anybody wants to trade them, I mean, that's in fairly decent nick. Uh, that's a less than very common game. <laughs> what to say? put it that way but yeah so if anybody's interested in some of those let me know if you want to do a trade otherwise they're going to be going to the uh, the local indie store where I'm trying to build up an amount of store credit my idea is you know all the things that I don't want the rejects and stuff I want to sell on I'm just, just going to keep on trading those things in for store credit and hopefully you know in about a year's time I might have enough store credit to get something pretty impressive outright on store credit which would be awesome uh, I'm thinking something like maybe the PS 4.5 or a 3DS something significant like that I'm up to about 56 quid in store credit so over the course of the next year it's yeah it's doable yeah I'm gonna try and do that you got to keep up, up uh, uh, topping it up though as well because after a year this stores store credit uh, cancels out and I had that happen to me once before. I had like 14 quid on store credit. I'd left it for quite a while. I went back to check and it had wiped off the system. So I've been diddled out of 14 quid. I was not happy. So this time I'm going to make sure there's a drip feed keeping that store credit current because that's what they do every time you trade in. It refreshes it or something. Uh, so yeah, that is my plan for that. Uh, anyway, so pickups. Shall I do that first? No, let's talk about this first. I've just finished Skyward Sword. 
uh, is it last night? Yeah, last night, finished this. Oh, my God. Fantastic game. Absolutely loved it. I know there was some kind of lukewarm reception to it when it first came out. I don't know why. Uh, it's it's right up there with my favourite Zeldas. Brilliant. Um, you know, the new elements to the gameplay, the, the flying around on uh, on the big eagle thing, griffin, whatever it's, I don't know what it's called. Can't remember. Uh, yeah, that's cool. You know, the new toys it introduces along with the traditional ones that you always get spiced it up i like the environments the enemies the bosses were brilliant the final boss was dead easy i was really surprised you get to fight this guy called demise who's a pretty awesome looking sort of reminiscent of akuma a demon guy with big flame hair the final boss he's yeah, it's pretty easy actually uh but yeah I'm, it's not a criticism just an observation i guess but uh yeah I'll be holding on to that. I'm definitely going to play through on hero mode. Uh, I've never actually played a Zelda game on hero mode before, so I'll, I think I'll do it on this one and see what else uh, can be gleaned from it. Right, okay. Some of these that I've already opened, I was planning on doing a kind of uh, opening reveal, uh, you know, a live unpackaging video, as uh, someone recently lamented that there isn't many of. Was that Lebosu? I think it was. Um, yeah, we're saying that uh, it can be exciting. Put those that word in parentheses uh, to watch people unpackage things and see together, sharing the excitement of whether or not a game is in good nick or not. It's the little, it's the very little things in life, isn't it, that keeps you going? Yeah. Anyway, so these are all from uh, CEX, I do believe. Yeah, some decent prices. So. We first have The Incredibles, Rise of the Underminer. Uh, I haven't seen this game out in the wild ever. So again, it was one of those where I thought, is that going to be collectible based on the fact that these specific eyes have never seen it out in a shop? Probably not, but uh, I got it for anyway. And uh, yeah, action platformer, cool abilities and such. We shall see how that turns out. Uh, yeah, let me show you three of these games specifically then say a little thing about it. Uh, don't need to give you a commentary about that, do I? Uh, Bard's Tale. This is uh, a, an action RPG. Apparently it's kind of quite comedic, almost like a sort of satire on RPGs. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see it from, from that uh, point of view. Uh, kind of, uh, you know, very self-knowing, wink-wink kind of thing. Uh, comedic references to uh, the genre's tropes. Uh, but I'm sure I would like that Bard's Tale. Sounds intriguing, definitely. Uh, yep, and that is complete. These were two quid each. And in Minority Report, everybody runs. Apparently. This looks like a pretty sweet game. Uh, yeah, uh, third person action, stealth, investigation uh, game. It, this looks ace. I've not seen any reviews of it, I'm not going to watch anything, I'm just going to whack it in and have a go. But uh, yeah, that one is also complete. That was, uh, I think that was 70p, or £1, I think it was a, qu a quid I think it was, yeah. And the good thing about CEX as well is if you order a whole bunch of games, uh, the postage is still just 250 for the whole lot. So it's better to get a whole lot together, you save a hell of a lot on postage and uh, yeah, the, some of the prices are pretty decent so it's worth you know, shawling through. Um, but these three, I ordered quite a few, these three didn't come. And so I had to write to them and asked for them to be sent out. They checked and said that they had been sent out. This was about a week later. They said, you got to wait 14 days for us to step in and do anything. I waited an extra week and messaged again and said, look, they're still not here. And they said, all right, and we'll send you some replacements. So they did. They sent me replacements. These ones just arrived yesterday, about three weeks after I ordered them. So, yeah, you know, it was to note, the originals were three weeks after I ordered. The replacements came two days after I ordered the replacements, two weeks after the first order, if you get me. Uh, so, yeah, what was that? Yeah, two quid. I was right when I had two quid, two quid and a quid. So, yeah, I now have spare copies of these. So I guess what, I'll just pilfer the best condition ones and the rest will go on trade. And again, you guys, if you want my uh, scruffy offcasts, 
uh, yeah, there's those three games to add to the list as well. I think Bard's Tale isn't complete, I do believe. No, nope, Bard's Tale is complete. One of them wasn't complete, was it? Yeah, Incredibles. The Incredibles that I'll be having up for trade is not complete, just to let you know. But uh, yeah, they'll be there as well. Um, right, King Arthur. Uh, didn't see the film. Didn't hear anything about it. Can't be that brilliant. Maybe it is. Who knows? But yeah, I just like that era. You know, I like uh, the kind of Middle Ages uh, as a setting for games. You know, where there's uh, no guns, or at least uh, very rudimentary guns. I don't think there will be. No, there won't be in this one, will there? Bow and arrow. Yeah, I like it. It's. it's I like. It's. A, it's a nice uh, era to set games in. You know, the, the language used, the, the weapons, the even, you know, the horses, the, I can say vehicles, i.e. horses, locations, um, castles and such. Yeah, been nice setting. Um, so, you can play the movie, apparently. Anyone a fan of this? Anyone played it? Let me know what it is like. Because I couldn't find out just by playing it myself, could I? Yeah, right. Next was Pitfall, Mayan Adventures, was it? No, The Lost Expedition. Uh, yeah, it just looks like a fun uh, 3D platformer, puzzling platformer type thing. Uh, yeah, Pitfall. Um, you also get on this, bonus, includes Pitfall 1 and 2, the originals. I believe those were like uh, uber retro um, games. C64 era, is it? Something like that, even before that maybe? Um, yeah, very, very old, uh, but much loved games, those original Pitfalls. So yeah, cool to have that. I think that was about four quid. Ooh, big spender. Yeah. Uh, right, Da Vinci Code. Seen this around a few times, but never had any real interest in it until I kind of read about what it is, and it's a puzzler. It's a kind of uh, puzzle games. So I, I like that kind of thing, I like cerebral games that get you thinking. Uh, something different, change of pace, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, I'll definitely look into that. I'm interested in the Da Vinci Code as well. You know, it's about uh, uncovering... Uh, is it, is it lost Bible texts or something? Or uh, codes within the Bible? Uh, interesting conspiracy type shenanigans. Uh, but yeah, that will be cool, I'm sure. I didn't see that film either. So I've not, I don't know what to expect at all, apart from you know the blurb that you hear about, that everyone knows about. Uh, next one, metal arms glitch in the system. Uh, lots of kind of modding of robots and uh, equipment and such. So lots of uh, customizable, uh, you know, things, uh, action in this game. It looks pretty sweet, yeah. Happy with that. Oh, 9 out of 10. Oh, it's an official Xbox magazine elite. So come on, numbers never lie. 9 out of 10. Right. Uh, next was uh, a game that I did admittedly get purely because I heard somewhere that it's kind of uncommon. And it's Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure. And uh, yeah, it is Activision. It is basically Tony Hawk's for kids, uh, you know, with these characters and slightly pared down controls and abilities. Um, but it's still a Tony Hawk's game, effectively, in fantastical environments and such. So there's got to be some fun in there somewhere. I used to love the Tony Hawk's games, and to see this spin on it, yeah, worth a shot. I will give it a go anyway, let's see. But I'm happy to have it in the collection because, like I said, I think it is fairly collectible. This one's not in the best condition. Uh, it's mainly just out, out of box though, so that's all right. I'll have to swap it out, but you do have a bit of a crack there. Look at that, oh dear. But that's okay, that can be salvaged. I'll get a replacement box for that. The last one that I have already unpackaged uh, is Gun Griffin Allied Strike. I saw someone post about this game on an Xbox uh, Facebook page which I'll link in the low bar if you're interested in the original Xbox and you haven't checked this page out already you should definitely do it it's uh, a really cool page and lots of uh, friendly uh, people talking about the original Xbox uh, yeah this was mentioned on there and I'd never seen this game anywhere neither in the wild or online or anywhere uh, just never seen it so again I thought oh that's got to be uncommon maybe it is maybe it's not uh, more importantly, it looks like a badass game. It's a mech shooter, as I'm sure you can tell by the artwork there. Really cool artwork, I do like that front cover. But let me just show you some, if I can, of the pictures there. Really cool graphics there for a sixth generation machine. I know Pete Snestastic loves that terminology. Uh, but yeah, look at the graphics, man. For the original Xbox, yeah, you're probably not getting 
too much out of that, but looks good. Uh, happy to. I never really got into mech games in a big way, so this one certainly looks like one to worth uh, that's worth trying. And it should hopefully sedate us. Is that the right word? Satiate my uh, desire for another mech Xbox game, which is uh, just out of my league at the minute, and that is um, a Japanese exclusive, the name of which I cannot remember. I've got a shoddy memory, really terrible. I could tell you why, but I get arrested. Um, yeah, uh, this is a really expensive Japanese exclusive uh, mech game. Uh, fuck me, why, why has this happened to my brain? I can't remember. It'll be in an annotation anyway. So yeah, but that all uh, that other game goes for over a hundred quid. This one, I believe, was about three quid. Off the top of my head, yeah, pretty damn cheap. Looks like a fun game. So that was some games what I got. There's two that I haven't taken out of the uh, bags yet, so we'll find out together whether or not these are in decent condition. So this is the first one. I've already un thinged it, but whatever, here we go. It is Death Row. Certainly quite a collectible and critically acclaimed game. Sort of like a um, how do you it's kind of a kind of a sport game, but not really. Uh, you throw this disc around and it's kind of a sort of handball, speedball, it's like a slight speedball basically, uh, sort of game. Uh, yeah, this is the, apparently this is the uncensored version with full blood, full swearing, full violence. That is the first time, I, and hopefully last time, I've ever seen a game explicitly crow about the fact that it's got full swearing. That it's got this game has swearing in it. Fuck! Get this fucking game on oh my shit and god. Who cares? Do you know? To be honest, quite often when I hear swearing in games, I feel like it's kind of crowbarred in there to try and make it appeal to teenagers who think that it's really cool to swear. It is cool to swear. Don't get me wrong. But you know, not to that degree that it, you know I would buy a game. Or be impressed by a game that said it has swearing in it. But yeah, it's very strange. Uh, yeah, but it looks like a cool game. And yeah, it's uh, fairly flexible. This was six quid. And let's find out. It is complete. In pretty good condition. Yeah, happy with that, definitely. That was a win. And the disc is in good condition as well. Not that you can see that. But uh, yeah. Like I said, a bit of a lottery sometimes. But you can also take them back if they're, if they're not in good nick. This one is. Happy with that. Death row for six quid. Nice. Right, okay. Next one. What do we have here? Oh, Richard Burns Rally. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's have a look. Oh, it's not complete. Yeah, this was for a friend. He's quite anal, just like me. He will not settle for a, an incomplete original Xbox game. So I'll either keep that or trade it. I believe that was about a quid as well, so pretty cheap. Uh, I'll have a go at it first, so I do enjoy rally games. Sega Rally uh, was fantastic, and um, yeah, certainly give it a, a go. So anyway, that's me, original Xbox pickups. Yeah, um, that's it, guys. <sighs> Does anybody know how to do a sun dance? And if you do, can you do one now and keep doing it for about the next week? Jesus. Come on, Summer. Come on.